Hello everyone, this is Jenny Gibbons, and I am one half of Woodsy Studio, and we're a small indie company that makes visual novels. And a little over a year ago, we started using Unreal Engine 4 to make our visual novels, which may seem like an unusual choice, but we have just, we just love the engine, and um, we love the additional things we can bring to a visual novel using Unreal Engine 4. Um, but it was a bit tricky to set up a visual novel in the first place uh, within this huge awesome engine. So given that when I started I really couldn't find a lot of resources out there um, to help me get started uh, with this sort of project specifically, um, I thought it was time for me to share a bit of what I've learned uh, about making visual novels in Unreal Engine 4 and how our studio has gone about doing it. Um, I should mention that we created this um, process for, for visual novels uh, largely due to our own preferences um, after working on other engines. I, I'm sure there are other ways to do this. I know that Unreal has some built-in tools for branching dialogue and that sort of thing. Um, but for us, uh, we preferred to work with a system that was uh, just more comfortable for us that we built ourselves. So um, we want to share that in case other people feel the same way and want to do a similar style visual novel using, using this engine. So to start us off here, I am just going to start a new project. Um, you can launch it from your uh, Epic Games um, launcher here. Whoops. So um, I'm going to use this, the 2D side scroller template. Um, there are all sorts of great tutorials already out there about just setting up the basics of your project with your main character and your movement and um, your side scrolling environment. Um, so for our purposes, I'm just going to start with this uh, side-scrolling template. I'm going to call this the end tutorial and create project. Okay, so now the project is open here in Unreal Engine 4. And as you can see, we've already got a uh, camera here for us. We've got a little environment set up um, in a 2D style and we've got our main character. Um, whose blueprint is over here in Blueprints, 2D side-scroller character. So now I want to talk about um, what our scenes actually look like before we bring them into this sort of Unreal um, project. And uh, I'm a game developer who started out as a writer first and foremost, so I still like to write, um, you know, in, in a Word or open office document and um, type things out in classic style. Um, so we developed a way to create our scenes from that sort of uh, document. And here's an example from uh, actually a game we're working on right now, Echoes of the Fae, The Last Sacrament. And you can see here that this is um, a spreadsheet of the scene. Um, we actually first just write it in OpenOffice because uh, that's what we uh, prefer to do. Um, and then we just have some basic commands that'll turn it into uh, a spreadsheet like this. Um, and then a lot of it we have to custom add for each scene, all the expressions, all the sounds, um, all of that. But you can see that this is the structure uh, that a lot of our scenes end up taking um, when they actually go into the game. You know, as you can see for a f this finished game here, we have a lot of kind of complex things that we put in. Um, we have here who's talking, the expression they're making, sound cues um, that we connect to files in Unreal, uh, what they're saying. Um, we have a special event that's that's used not in this scene but that we use uh, to control choices and branching within the scene. We have a special effect column where we um, do lots of uh, basic camera work, like when we want to change uh, who the camera's looking at, and uh, or if we want like a camera shake, or just like little effects that we want to add during the scene. We put those in the special effect column. We have a character horizontal column that um, 
basically represents uh, where the character is going to be on the screen. Uh, this is relative to the mi middle, so negative 40 would be over to the left, uh, 40 is over to the right, and this is their scale because sometimes we want to zoom in or zoom out. So as you can see, we have a pretty complex system here. Um, for our tutorial, you know, we're going to do something much simpler, but I just wanted to uh, show you this as a reference um, that based on the things I'm going to teach you, um, you can develop a pretty complex system from that. Um, so first off, I'm just going to make a new spreadsheet here. Um, we don't need all these other columns, so I'm going to simplify it a little bit. We're always going to need this uh, row number. Um, it's just it's Unreal is going to use it as an identifier of which row is which, um, and I prefer just to keep that a number. Um, so that's always going to be the, that left row, and here we're going to have our speaker, the character who's speaking. Um, and then we'll just, for now, we'll just do the text. And in character position. So I'm just choosing some basic things that we're going to want to tell Unreal when we have a scene going um, for this tutorial. Close this out. So let's say for this little scene here, um, our speaker is going to be Sally, and she's going to say, hello, how are you today? Nice weather, don't you think? Yes, yeah, really genius. And for our character position, we're probably not going to get too far into this uh, for this tutorial, but let's just put her kind of a little to the left of the screen. All right, so we've just started a really basic scene. I'm gonna save this out. Got a little tutorial folder here. Just gonna call this scene one. And Unreal Engine likes to use CSV files, so I'm going to save this as a CSV as well. I like to keep both versions, that's just a personal preference, because sometimes um, there's more that I can do in the ODS. I believe these are the defaults, but um, you want your field delimiter to be the comma, text delimiter be the double quotations and save cell content as shown. And that's fine. Okay, just a, a little note uh, because it's just one of the quirks with UE4. Uh, make sure you close this file uh, before you try and bring it in because otherwise it will fail without, uh, without much explanation. But we're not going to bring it in just yet. We're going to leave it sitting there. And First, we need to tell Unreal how to interpret what we've just made before we try and bring it in. And we're going to do that using um, an element in Unreal Engine called uh, Structures. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to right click, go to Blueprints and Structure. Let's call this VN, oop, VN Scene. Struct. Open that up. Um, so, for reference, let's take a look again really quick at what we created here. We're going to have a speaker column, the text column, and the character position column. So we need to put each of those into the struct so it will recognize them. So the speaker column um, I'm actually going to make this an enum. So we're also going to right click, um, go to blueprints and enumeration here. 
If you've never used an uh, enum before, it's really, really handy. Um, basically, it's a predefined list that you can make uh, when you know there's only going to be certain variables and you don't want it to be completely random. It it reduces the, the chances of making a mistake um, and uh, because it's always going to pull from this predefined list if it can. So I'm going to call this character list. And let's just say, uh, oh, let's say description list of characters or speaking characters going to add a couple variables here. I'm going to have a narrator because probably occasionally want a narrator and I'm going to add Sally. And that's it. That's all I have to do there. Save. So over here we're going to tell it that um, it's going to pull this from an enumerator. Um, you can find it here under enum. It's got our character list already. I'm going to select that. I'm going to name this speaker. And you can see that it. you can give it a default value here, which is really handy. So our default value, I'm just going to say, is narrator. It's generally a safe default, uh, so it doesn't pull from some random character if you make a mistake. So we've got the first variable of our structure defined here. Now we need the next one, which is going to be our text. I'm going to go ahead and make this a string. Um, there are times you could, you could make it into text, and there are some reasons you might prefer doing that. Um, I like to use a string uh, just because of all the flexibility it allows. So our string variable here is going to be our text. And then if we look at our reference here, the third one is going to be character position. Oops. I want to make a new variable first. And I'm going to go ahead and make this an integer. It could be a float if you wanted to get more specific and have uh, decimal points, uh, but we're not going to need that, so I'm just going to make it an integer. And save. So now we have a struct, and this is basically a um, way that Unreal is going to be able to interpret the data tables that we bring in. So now that we have this, we can go back to our CSV file here can drag it in. My computer's a little uh, finicky about dragging in. Okay. So already, because it's a CSV, Unreal Engine is like, oh, okay, you're trying to import a data table. But what kind is it? So we're going to select the VN scene struct here that we just defined. And okay. So, um, oh, it doesn't like my apostrophes. So, looky there, you have uh, your scene data table now uh, imported into Unreal. It's got a speaker, it's got text, it's got the character position, and it's got the just the default row numbers over here, one and two. So that concludes part one of the tutorial. In part two, we'll do a lot more with what we started here. We'll actually have the scene launch by clicking on an actor within the game, and we'll display it using widgets. So thanks for watching, and um, please join me for part two. And also, if you're interested to see uh, the visual novels that I've made, check out my studio and its games at woodsystudio.com. Thanks.